Hey everybody, welcome to the man's cave. In today's video we're going to be making this skull doorstop out of a zinc alloy. It uh, is similar to pot metal or Xanax, is another name for it. Uh, you, the drawer pulls in your kitchen, those handles are a zinc alloy as well. They're, so they're a similar metal to this. Anyway, we are going to be using a lost wax process, utilizing a product that I came up with called Hellfire. It's a refractory coating and mold mix. So we are going to be utilizing that and we are going to make this skull doorstop. Follow along, we'll get right started. All right, so to get started, we're going to be creating a wax shell and we're just going to build up layers using using our wax. And this is this is a wax pot that I I made out of a, a fryer. You can actually just buy them this way on Amazon. But the, I pour it into a uh, this is a silicone pitcher measuring cup device. Anyway, you uh, <clears throat> just keep building it up, and I'll actually stick my mold in the freezer uh, in between coats just to get it to to build quicker, and so that that wax isn't melting the layers of wax you've already put in when you when you're building your layer and here I'm brushing in the wax this is a good way to build up layers quickly and uh, yeah it works really well this way so if you have access to the inside of the mold this is a quick way of building your layers and with this doorstop I wanted it to be really heavy so I actually built it up I think it ended up being like three eighths almost half inch thick of wax so it was really thick I actually had some metal shrinkage issues when when I cast it in the metal so yeah I, I cast it a little too thick but it did still turn out really good so I'm happy with it this is a micro crystalline wax that I use I believe it's a, a petrol based wax anyway it's uh, it's a great wax to work with it it turns out pretty hard when it's when it's uh, cooled off and I just re I really like working with it. I don't like the uh, the wax that that a lot of foundries use and and uh, jewelry people use to make make their jewelry. It's just too rigid and and brittle. I don't like the brittle of the the red and blue waxes. But uh, yeah, so I use this micro crystalline wax, and you can find it online. I'll see if I can find a good source for you guys. So now we're demolding the the mold and you just have to be careful not to push too hard I mean this this mold this uh, wax shell is really thick so it's not too much of a chance of damaging the the piece but when you're pulling a mold make sure that it's uh, nice and cooled off like again you can put it in the freezer or refrigerator to to harden the wax get it ready to mold I actually use a whole bunch of different tools for for wax chasing the razor blade here works well for cleaning up the bottom edge, getting it ready to, uh, well, I'll show you here in a second, but this is a scraper tool that I, I built. It's just basically like a sculpting tool. A lot of the sculpting tools work. This is a wax uh, wax pin that I've, it's actually a wood burning pin set, and I'll leave a, a link in the description for this as it works fantastic for wax chasing. Uh, the wood burning uh, kit has a adjustable adjustable heat on it, so it works really well. And this is just a used uh, griddle that I bought from a thrift store for about seven bucks, I believe. And uh, I turned it at about 200 degrees, and and it melts that bottom, giving us a perfectly flat surface. So this works really well to get your flat surface on the bottom. And then using the wax pin again, I'm sprueing up my piece and I didn't make the cup on this big enough I should have used a different method on making the cup as it was hard to stand up and melt out or do the wax melting I'll show you in the view to further down in the video but yeah this this wax uh, chasing pin I'm calling it a wax chasing pin because that's what I use it for but it is yeah like I say originally made for for wood burning and the the heat adjustment on it is really awesome where you can take it down where it barely melts the wax 
or way up high where it would actually burn wood. But yeah, I think I paid right around $30 for it and it, it was definitely worth buying it at that price for. So just makes wax chasing really easy and spruing up the pieces just changes the whole dynamic of it. It makes it super easy and quick. So if you're going to be casting metals, you know, whether you use my product or not or other methods, you should definitely buy one of these pins to uh, to do the wax chasing. So here I'm just using some some metal screws. I should have used stainless steel as these got kind of brittle during the casting process. But I'm going to try this one more time with stainless steel screws to see if it works better. I just had a hard time getting out getting these out when I when I had cast the piece. <coughs> so yeah, in the future, you can use nails too. Nails work really well. But I like the idea of being able just to unscrew um, the screws after you're done. So this is the primer coat that I'm using. And it's very, very much the same as like your suspended slurry. It, uh, it works really well as it's a really hard shell. Um, so I just build up three to five layers on the primer. And I just kind of dab it on, getting it kind of a little thicker layer. And you make sure you want to cover your entire piece really well. So I think this is the third coat now. And uh, yeah, it's turning out nice and nice and thick. And you do want to allow it to dry completely before between each coat. Now we're using the Hellfire. So this is my product that I developed. Works fantastic. It uh, you can you can put it straight onto your wax, but it has uh, some voids uh, as it's got some materials in it that that you can, it's easy to trap air air pockets in it, air bubbles. So you're Casting won't come out as nice if you don't use the primer on it first. <clears throat> Again, we're just building up layers. Now, I, I like three to five coats on this. On the bigger pieces like this, I'll do I'll do five coats. Sometimes even more in areas where I want it to be thicker. But you you build up each coat. You're seeing that I'm doing maybe an eighth inch thick coat each time and so and then it'll shrink back a fair amount each time too here I'm feeling the interior of the shell with investment now I don't sell this I just buy it on Amazon um, there's other places that sell sell it as well and I'll leave a, a link in the description for that as well so the investment goes on the interior that keeps us from trying to have to fill that void with something or with trying to brush on a shell in the interior. Now that uh, we, we've we allowed it to dry completely, you don't want any moisture at all when you, uh, when you go to burn out your wax, at least on the exterior shell, as it will, it will pop off layers if there's moisture in the shell. So I'm looking for something to prop this up because as I'm burning it out, I'm realizing, hey, this is going to tip over and possibly do damage to my uncured shell. So um, just using a 2x4 to prop that up there. So, And when you do a burnout on your, on your piece, you start down at the cup and you melt that out first. So then you want all of the wax running out from the, from the bottom, that base, the cup and then out from from the rest of the piece. If you try to do it other than that, what will happen is that wax will expand within your mold, your shell, and it will it'll crack your piece and, that, and, and cause some casting issues. You may still get cracks here and there. Um, that happens sometimes. And you can do repairs with, um, with just adding another layer on top of the cracks. So not a big deal. I don't burn out my my shell 100% with the torch as you really want to burn out the investment that's on the interior 
really slowly and that's what I'm using the kiln for is to cook out all the moisture from that investment on the interior of the the shell because if you try to burn it out with the the torch you're gonna you just gonna it's gonna crack on you and break apart on the interior and then you will have a failed casting so this is the zinc that uh, I'm casting with this is some ingots I made earlier using the the uh, little what do you call them the little bread pans um, perfect size for for uh, for those ingots now you'll notice on the lid of my my foundry or, or furnace is uh, that's actually just kale wool coated in in my product um, hellfire so and I think I put five or six thick layers on there to build up a nice thick coat and then I I cured it and then I, I burn it with a, uh, a torch I burn it out and cure did a final cure on it and this has been holding up pretty well so I'm pretty happy with with it as a lid just the way it is I, I did that as a test to see how well it would hold up and it's holding up pretty well so I'm pretty happy I'm just pulling off the dross now and uh, pulling out our our crucible now the nice thing about this metal the Xanac or pot metal that I use is that it's really easy to pour and it melts at a lower temperature I can't remember the exact temperature but it's right around aluminum in in the temperature of heat so it melts really nice and it pours amazing so it's a it's a heavy metal similar to the weight of bronze but it, it melts at a much lower temperature and it just gives us a nice nice cast without without too many problems so now this mold that I just cast was in the in the uh, in the kiln for about eight hours before I I pulled it and we cast this. So this is actually up to temperature, and I'm casting the mold at a, right around a thousand degrees, so that when I pour it into it, it doesn't uh, cool off the metal really fast, and we don't get some areas that it cat won't cast out. So after it cools off a bit, just get after it with a hammer and start chipping off the the shell. Now I have dipped them in water in the past. And that's kind of fun to do. Um, you can do it either way. I think it's about 50s on on what's easier. So now I'm using a sawzall with a uh, I think it's a demo blade to have on there, a, a finer tooth demo blade, and it uh, it's cutting through this really well. So it's meant to cut nails and things of that nature. So a soft, a softer metal like uh, a zinc. A zinc based metal is really easy to, to work with. So yeah, and just uh now well, that's one of those screws, the reason why it's throwing sparks is because one of those screws that I tried to back out wouldn't back out. It was stuck inside of the the metal, so I just made it a part of the, the piece, which is okay because it's pretty close in color. It may have an issue rusting in the future. Another reason to use the, the stainless so if you can't get it out, then it just becomes a part of the piece, which is just fine in this material. Now, this I did get some flashing issues, um, but I'm e easily being able to chip those out. And it actually went in between the uh, the primer coat and the and the Hellfire coat. So I think that was an issue when I tried to burn it out. I was a little too fast on the on the draw and caused it to do some separation so now I'm just cleaning out the investment from the interior you could actually leave it as this is going to be a heavy doorstop um, at this point I've I have sandblasted this to clean it up I lost that footage for some reason I don't know where it went so but we'll show that in some future videos I'm using a Dremel here um, to clean it up and the grinder with a polishing wheel these are super cheap you can buy these wheels on Amazon I'll try to leave find a link for those they work fantastic 
So once you get it sanded down and cleaned up, then to polish it. Once you get it uh, completely polished, um, yeah, it's looking nice there. Then you can leave it like this. Like this is, it's just fine this way, and we can give it a cleaning and and a clear coat or something to protect the the metal from oxidizing. So you could stop here if you wanted to. I like my pieces with a little bit more. Uh, what would be the antiquing or? Uh, yeah, anyway, so I use this uh, this chemical here, and it's an acid base. And this is actually how I test to see if something is a zinc-based metal. Is uh, is you put a teaspoon of of this uh, chemical in a spray bottle and mix it up really well, and then yeah, it will oxidize the out, out exterior into that black black color and then I, I actually polish this back a little bit and you do want to wash off the the acid after you after you spray it on so rinse it in water before you before you buff it back and and put a clear coat on so now I'm just adding my rope and the um, hole that was previous there and uh, once I put that in there, I'm actually just going to glue this from the bottom. This is Gorilla Glue, and it expands into a foam as it's curing. So it will expand around that bottom of the rope and, and lock it in place. And then I'll go ahead and put a pad on the bottom. You don't want to put too much of this, as it'll foam up through the pad. So, so you want to be very careful on how much you use. But this is just felt here to protect the floor, whatever it's uh, sitting on. And uh, so there you have it. This is our created piece. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, subscribe and, and like. Share it with others that, that have an interest in this kind of thing. I'm trying to get the word out there of this new product and, and means of casting metal. I think it's really cool and I want uh, a lot of people to be able to enjoy this process with me in creating metal at home. So yeah, we're going to be doing lots of casting. See you in a future video.